And uh, that verse there, he says, uh, 1 and 16, for we have not followed cunning devised fables. In other words, we have not uh, 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 followed after a fairy tale. Uh, when Christ uh, has committed unto us through God, it's not a fairy tale. Uh, Jesus' return is not a fairy tale. The salvation that has been awarded to us is not a fairy tale. And we ought to, uh, as the scripture says, take the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard, least we let them slip. Uh, the worst thing that a child of God can do is to become distracted in the body of Christ. Because uh, the enemy wants to distract us and to make us to think, well, they said for years Jesus was coming and he hasn't came yet. Well, if he hasn't uh, come and broke the sky and he hasn't come yet, uh, death is coming. And uh, to every man, it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. If he doesn't come, it's good for us to be ready just in case death comes first. Because uh, if death comes, uh, then that uh, the earthly book will be closed, and then your eternal book will be open, and every man is going to be rewarded according to how their work shall be, how they have lived their life. And, and you want to hear them say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Into the joy of the Lord. So whether he comes by uh, uh, <coughs> overtaker or it's the undertaker, uh, you want to be ready. Amen? And, and in being ready, you want to take the word of God seriously. <laughs> My God. You want to, the uh, Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, that's how you want to live. You want to take this thing serious. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says in that, in that verse, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We're not following after anything that, that any trickery, any, anything that, uh, uh, I want to use the word sorcery. Or, or anything that deals with magic or anything like that. We have dealt with the Lord, he's saying, and we have not uh, brought you a fairy tale about the coming of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> so notice what he said. He said, for we have not followed cunning, devised fables, and, 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 and let me get back to that, to that, when he says we have followed not cunningly devised fables. Because in it, he's talking about if you do the things that he recommends, uh, in those other verses, adding to your faith. If you do those things, he makes a bold statement that ye shall never fall. Amen? Amen. Uh, that's, that's a bold statement there. And, it, and it's backed by the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is backed by the God. Amen? If you do these things, ye shall never fall. And notice what he said. Uh, for uh, uh, we have made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's, that's what he's referring to. If you do the things that I recommend to you, you'll experience the power of God in your life. Your experience is anointing. Your experience is graces. You'll experience his power. And notice, uh, unto the uh, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back for a church uh, that has made themselves ready. Uh, he's coming back. Hallelujah. He's coming back. Notice, he said, uh, uh, but we ourselves, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Man, we were eyewitnesses of the majesty of Jesus Christ. And what he's referring there 
is, is, is the, 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 the transfiguration. And uh, let's go there real quick. Uh, say, uh, Matthew chapter 17, all of the Gospels talk about this transfiguration of Jesus Christ. And the transfiguration of Jesus Christ is literally, uh, if you allow me to say it this way so we can catch it, it's literally a dry run. Of, of him cracking the skies and saying, come my people. Uh, uh, Matthew <coughs> chapter 17 and verses uh, 1 through 5. Notice what it says. It says, and after six days, Jesus taken Peter, James, and John and his brethren and uh, bringing, them un bringing them up into and high mountain apart. So he just took those, those uh, uh, apostles with him. All right? Brought them up, took them up to the mountain, apart from the rest of the apostles. Notice, verse number two. He says, and was transfigured before them. Jesus was changed. Uh, as the scripture says, uh, the Bible talks about us being changed in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. His, his mortal put on immortality. Uh, his mortal body put on immortality. It was literally a precursor to him when he cracks that sky. Amen? And, and he stands uh, between heaven and earth and gets ready to say, come my people. Amen? So this year, is is a how uh, can you say a precursor to what's going to happen? It's going to happen. And Peter says that we were eyewitnesses to what was going to happen. It's going to happen. Jesus Himself said uh, before He transitioned from this earth. He they said uh, uh, the angel said when He was taken up. He said, "Ye men of Galilee." Why stand ye here gazing uh, uh, for the same Jesus that you saw taken up is coming back. He's coming back in the same like night. Who's he coming back for? He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for those that have been baptized in his name and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and, and are walking with him. Amen? Amen? And that's why Peter said, if you do these things, uh, because you don't know when he's coming as a thief in the night. If you do these things, ye shall never fall. <laughs> um, notice, notice. And was verse number two he says, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment, meaning his clothing, was white as black. Amen. Now he was transfigured before. He, they saw it. And notice, and it said, And behold, there appeared unto them, notice, Moses and Elias uh, uh, talking with them. And then Peter answered, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses and one for Elias. Amen? And, and right at this moment when they appear, let me, let me read a little further. While he yet speak, spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. So, so at this particular moment, this, this transfiguration, you had all of God's whole plan of salvation in one place. God's plan of salvation in one place. Notice, hallelujah. Uh, you had the apostles there, Peter, uh, James, and John, who was representing the apostles. You had Moses there, who was representing the law, and you had Elias, who was Elijah there, who represented the prophet.
that or 
are many instances where he himself was witness to and about. Amen. It's, it's all about Jesus. The, the, the prophets witnessed about the suffering of Christ. Amen. The angels, they testified of the suffering of Christ. God himself talked about the suffering of Christ. The Holy Ghost is a witness of the suffering of Christ. It teaches us and talks to us about Christ. Amen. And when, when, when Jesus said, he shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is coming upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. Amen. Uh, you should have the witness within yourself. Amen. About the power of Jesus Christ. You should feel that witness yeah. within you. Uh, you should know that, that Christ is real. Yeah. You should know uh, and testify that Jesus uh, is the Savior. And he is, when he shows up, he's going to show up with all power, and he is my deliverer. Yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, people should know by your lifestyle that Jesus is real. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Uh, you should be a witness unto him. Hey, glory. Now, Peter said, and the apostles, I can't think of not, they were our witnesses of the coming of the Lord. Now, you may say, Pastor, why do you do this all this stuff? I'm reading all this up so that you would have it in your mind uh, that, that, that Jesus is real. real. Uh, the enemy, he wants to put it in your mind if thou be the Son of God. Uh, uh, why should you be living this life? Right. Amen? Uh, I mean, you should live this life to live with yeah. You should live this life because Jesus is going to get soon to come yeah. uh, in a moment. Uh, whom I uphold, yes. 
He's a male. My father. Huh? Notice, he says, my elect. The one whom I have chosen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've chosen him. Thank you, Lord. Notice, in whom my soul delighted. The father delighted in him. Amen? Hallelujah. He delighted in him. Happy in him. Joy in him. Yeah. Amen? Notice, he says, I have put my spirit upon him. Jesus testified that day. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, didn't he say? Yeah. Uh, to heal. No. He, he, that, that's why he's so significant to us. Uh, if you're walking with Jesus, if you have a broken heart, your heart should be healed. Yeah. Amen? Uh, <coughs> Uh, 
that Peter made some bold statements in, in, in the upper verses about if you do the things that I've said, you shall never fall. And an entry shall be ministered unto you. Uh, and, and he's trying to get you to see that he himself was an eyewitness of these things. Amen? And, and uh, the meaning of the verses that we just went over, uh, that he's talking about the transfiguration, he's trying to get you to see and understand that that transfiguration was what we call a dry run. Oh, <laughs> uh, you understand what I mean when I say a dry run? Uh, it was, it was, it was a, a preview, a preview, that's a good example. A preview. You know how you see a movie and you go watch the previews? Uh, and that gets you interested? Uh, in, in, oh man, I gotta see this movie. I gotta, I gotta go see this. You make preparations. Amen. To go see it. Peter is trying to give you a preview. Uh, of, of what is going to happen. Uh, that Jesus is going to come. Amen? And, and you don't want to miss things. <laughs> uh, it's not things in life you can miss. Uh, uh, but you don't want to miss this. Uh, this is of the utmost importance. Amen? Uh, your soul hangs in the balance. Hallelujah. Uh, and it's of the utmost importance. So he said, do the things that I say, and an entry shall be ministered unto you, ye shall never fall. Now he's into uh, the art of persuasion. He's trying to persuade us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh God. We, we need to be persuaded. Yes. Huh? Uh, with confidence. Thank you. We've got to be in this thing with confidence. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Notice what he said. Notice what he said. Verse, verse, verse 19, he says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Notice, this is bold language. Uh, now, he said that uh, uh, what the prophets testified about was true. He said what the angels testified about was true. But what we're testifying to you uh, right now is even more true than that, if it can be. <laughs> you follow me? Huh? He's letting you know, putting his whole, whole, whole reputation on the line, that, that I'm giving you a for sure word <laughs> of promise. What I'm telling you is the truth, the whole truth. Uh, you need to be bought into this. Hold on and see. Uh, you need to sell all
the scriptures are said. Amen. Amen. Notice it. He said, we have a more, a also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Amen. That ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. That's you. Notice what he said. The words that, that, that we, he is teaching us and is speaking unto us, it's sure. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's a sure word of prophecy. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Whether I believe it or not, Jesus is coming. That's it. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus is coming. Yes. Amen. I'd rather live a life of holiness uh, and, and, and wait for him than, than, than not live a life of holiness and he comes. All right. And catch me being unprepared. All right. I'll go on. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. No. He said, We're 20. Well, verse 19, he said, You do well, you take ye as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jesus is the light of the world. And he shines in a dark place. Mm -hmm. That dark place is your heart. Mm -hmm. Your mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. When you receive Christ, the light of the world, he enlightens your mind. Right. The people that sat in darkness, they saw a great light. Right. That great light is Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, arise and shine. For thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Yeah. Amen. Now, when you when you receive Christ, you become in your mind should become illuminated. Yeah. Amen. And what I mean by illuminated, it means I mean this is that you should allow God's word, to, as the scripture says, be quick and powerful. Right. Sharper than any two-edged sword, yeah. piercing even the body of the center of the soul and the spirit, and become a discerner yeah. of the thoughts and intent of your heart. Yeah. In other words, Christ and, and his teachings should enlighten you to show you the way. Uh, the way of righteousness, right. the way of holiness, that you don't follow after uh, uh, the way of sinners. You don't sin in the seat of the scorn. Right. Amen. But your delight, your happiness is in the light. Yeah. Uh, and in that light, do you meditate all day and night? Uh, then it says, if you do that, you shall be like a what? A tree that is planted. Your leaves shall not wither, and know whatsoever you do, it shall what? Prosper. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. And Jesus gives you that life. Mm -hmm. uh, he gives you that life. His teaching, His doctrine. Uh, and it shines in the darkness of your heart. Yes. Uh, to give you understanding, uh, to give you wisdom. To give you good counsel. Amen. To give you power. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. That's why uh, we ought not to negate uh, the teachings of Jesus Christ. We should allow his word to illuminate our mind. Yes. Amen. Amen. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Uh, it says his blood will cleanse us yeah. from what? All unrighteousness. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jesus. My God. So 
If you do what? Take heed. You do well if you take heed. Pay attention. You be cautious about your life. If you walk circumspect, if you examine yourself. Right. Amen.
now the greatest thing since sliced bread.
search the scriptures and you should find the, the same thought throughout the scripture. Find it there. Amen? Amen. Thank you. And, and that's why you have to be, because what he's saying in these scriptures here, he's really going to build on in chapter number two. Yes, yes. Because he's saying that you got some wicked folk out there mm. that want to deceive you with the word of God. Mm. And then take a scripture and run with it, and it's not backed by scripture in the Bible. Right. They build a doctrine uh -huh. huh? on, on just one thought. Right. And they take the thought out of context. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Now watch who you follow. Yeah. Watch who you're listening to. Uh, right. Watch who you give your ear to. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Watch, watch who who got new revelation all the time. Right. Mm. right. Uh, all the got new revelation. Mm. Right. And you watch out for them. Yeah. Uh, watch, watch, watch out for people who, 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 who just want to be some on the mountain, but the fruits that they're bearing is rotten. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, Amen. Amen. Uh, watch out for folks. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's, that's always complaining. Right. Always murmuring. Yeah. Yeah. Never talk about themselves. Uh -huh. Right. Never talk about everybody else. Come on. Right. Huh? Watch out for them. Yeah. Amen. Amen.